Introduction to the Periodic Table. All right, so let's talk first about elements because that's what we're gonna find on the periodic table. And it's basically a type of pure substance that can't be broken down into simpler substances by chemical changes. All of the known elements are displayed in the periodic table. There are more than 100 of them. Uh, 90 of these occur naturally and uh, two dozen or so have been created in laboratories. All right, so let's remind ourselves about atomic symbols. So when we refer to an atom, we simply use the element's name. And that doesn't matter if we're talking about the element calcium, for instance, or an atom of calcium. And there is a defined symbol for each element. And that symbol is a one or two letter abbreviation of the name of the element. So here are some common elements and their symbols. And so this is a good uh, list to become familiar with. So aluminum, AL. Notice how the first letter is capitalized, the second letter is lowercase. So for elements with two letter atomic symbols, elemental symbols, um, the first letter is always going to be capitalized. The second letter is always going to be lowercase. And so basically, like for instance, if you were to write aluminum as A capital L, so capital A, capital L, that would be wrong. Uh, same with calcium as capital C, capital A, that would be wrong. So make sure you keep that in mind that the second letter is always lowercase. All right, so here is the periodic table. And so let's just talk about a few things on it. Um, one are these group numbers, okay? So we'll come back to this a little bit later in the presentation, but each one of these groups um, has elements that share similar properties, okay? And, um, and another thing to keep in mind here is uh, this key down here. So see that the light blue, those are non-metals, so that grayish light blue, those are all non-metals. Um, that'll be something to keep in mind when we talk about uh, ionic compounds because we're going to be combining a metal and a non-metal for those compounds. Um, these, these elements that are riding the line between the nonmetals and the metals are called metalloids. They're also called semi-metals, or um, you can also think of them as the semiconductor metals. Um, and so they have similar properties to, to both of these. So they're, they're kind of riding the line. Um, all of the tan elements, these are all metals, okay? And uh, so you'll recognize some of them. Here's iron, here's nickel, copper, gold, platinum. Um, but, you know, other ones that we're not used to thinking of metals as sodium, potassium, they're all metals. Um, hydrogen is not a metal, so technically it should be over here with the non-metals. But it shares properties with other elements in the first group. Um, all right, so group one and two. 13 through 18, these are all main group elements. And this area in between, those are transition metals. And one last thing that is on here, well, a couple of things we'll talk about. Um, the black lettering for an element, that means it is a solid under standard conditions. If it's blue, like mercury, that means it's a liquid. If it's red, that means it's a gas under standard conditions. And then finally, on each block, you're gonna see uh, this basically this uh, block that tells you some information about each element. So the atomic number, that's the number of protons. There's your atomic symbol. Uh, this is the weighted average atomic mass, okay, for all of the isotopes. And then some periodic tables have the name, others do not. The one that you will have for your exams will not have the name, but it will have this other information. All right. So Mendeleev uh, in Russia and Meyer in Germany independently recognized that there was a periodic relationship among the properties of the elements known at the time. So for, exam for example, they noticed that lithium, sodium, and potassium were all shiny, they conduct heat and electricity well, and they have similar chemical properties. Same goes for calcium, strontium, and barium, also shiny, conduct heat and electricity well, but are less reactive than lithium, sodium, and potassium. Now both of them published tables with the elements arranged according to increasing atomic mass. 
Now, Mendeleev, he used his table to predict the existence of elements that would have properties similar to aluminum and silicon, but those elements weren't yet known. So, when gallium and germanium were discovered, it supported uh, his work greatly. And so, um, and so that's basically how he became the father of the periodic table. So here's just a, an image of his, his notes. And so basically, you know, his construction of the original periodic table. And here's a picture of the guy himself. All right. So by the 20th century, it became apparent that the periodic relationship involved atomic numbers, which remember, that is the number of protons in the element as opposed to the atomic masses. And, um, and basically, that led to something called the periodic law, which says that the properties of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. Now, um, there's in, on the modern periodic table, there are arrangements of atoms in increasing order of their atomic numbers. And uh, atoms with similar properties are grouped in the same vertical column. Okay, So it's arranged. Uh, in a series of horizontal rows of increasing uh, atomic number, but down each group in a vertical column, um, those elements have similar properties. So again, if we go back to our periodic table, similar properties for lithium, sodium, potassium, just as we mentioned earlier, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium have similar properties. Transition metals in each one of these columns similar properties, okay? Um, same with boron, aluminum, gallium, indium, okay? And finally, all the noble gases, which we'll talk about at the very end. Um, so basically, they're organized according to their properties. And notice across each period, so each, each row is called a period, uh, we have increasing atomic numbers. All right, so let's just get a few of these properties in our head. So metals, uh, those are defined as they're shiny, they're malleable, they're good conductors of heat and electricity. And all, most of us are probably quite familiar with metals. Now, nonmetals appear dull. They are poor conductors of heat and electricity. And so things like carbon, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, those are nonmetals. The metalloids conduct heat and electricity moderately well, but they also possess some properties of metals and some properties of nonmetals, and so that's why they're right on the border. Now, as I mentioned, the main group elements, so these are the representative elements. Those are in groups one and two on the far left side, and then 13 through 18 on the right side. The elements that are in between are called the transition metals, and those are in groups 3 through 12. Now, I didn't talk much at all about the inner transition metals, and those are the two rows at the bottom of the periodic table. The first row is called the lanthanides, the second one is the actinides, but we're not going to be discussing those in this course particularly. All right, so other groups have names. Um, so alkali metals in group one, alkaline earth metals in group two, group 15, the nictogens, the chalcogens in group 16, halogens, group 17, and finally the noble gases, those are in group 18. So those are on the far right column of the periodic table. All of those are noble gases and they're inert. So that's also why they're called inert gases. So here's kind of a pictorial um, arrangement of that. So you hear the alkali metals, alkaline earth metals. Here's all your transition metals. Um, the lanthanides and the actinides that I mentioned a little bit earlier that we're not going to really touch. Those are down here. Um, the nitrogens, the chalcogens, the halogens, and the noble gases are in these columns. Now the rest of these guys are kind of unnamed. So, um, so we won't go any deeper than that. All right, so in summary, all the known elements are displayed in the periodic table, and all of those elements are arranged in increasing order of atomic number. Um, atoms with similar properties are grouped in the same vertical column, and we call those groups. And we have 18 numbered vertical columns or groups. And finally, periods or series, those are the horizontal rows on the periodic table.